Good morning, you guys. It's the start of a brand new day and a new adventure is lying ahead of us. We're gonna head out to Clear Lake, Minnesota. That's the headquarters of CMP Attachments. That's the guys that make the Hydra Bucket and Hydra Grapple. Well, I connected up with Derek, the owner, because I had an idea for a brand new attachment called the Monkey Claw. And what it's really meant to do is meant for demolition, but it's also meant to be a grapple. So not only can you tear concrete out and use it as a heavy duty pry bar, but you should also be able to wrap your monkey talons around it and hold it all the way to the truck. It's like a modified version of the beak that we use a lot, but I think it's gonna be a little bit more versatile. But of course, we don't know if it's gonna work at all because we haven't built it yet. That's what we're gonna go do today at CMP Attachments with Derek. So let's get this project started. Design, build, test, go. Good to see you, Derek. You too. Ola. Hey, All right, guys. So we're with Derek and Olaf. Derek's the owner. Olaf is the chief sales. And Derek, I was just telling these guys a couple weeks ago, you and I started to talk about the design for the monkey claw and we've been working through a couple different prototypes yeah. and i think you have something yeah we got something figured out for you all right cool let's check it out you want to check her out yes i do so this is dj right yep this is dj dj how you doing man good how are you good so so this is the monkey claw this, this is, is it, it. Could you blow that up a little bit bigger, DJ, so we can see it? So what we did too is we uh, added the replaceable edges on it. So the design has, just let's go over this real quick for these guys. The design has three tines on the bottom. And what, what we were hoping to achieve by doing that was we wanted to have a larger surface area so that when we got more loose concrete material, we'd have something, but also by having the more tines here, if we wanted to shake any of that dirt out, Correct. we could do it. And then we decided to go with two claws on the top. And the reason we wanted to do that is, as we had more loose material, we wanted to be able to have something that could come down over the top and just grab onto them. Now, did these each float separate so that if we have more material yes. on one side, Perfect. Yeah, so they so if you get a load that's uneven, mm -hmm. it'll be able to grab both sides of it. Mm. Perfect. Now, what were you saying about the wear edges, Derek? Well, the only thing that we're worried about is this. It almost gets utilized like a fork, and we brought these two pieces up and and we're meeting and putting a weld. Mm. Um, one of the worries is is that's going to wear over time. So. We do feel if we put this in production that they should be a solid steel um, chunk that's milled down, mm. kind of like a fork. Yeah. Um, that way as it wears, you can just keep it sharpening with a grinder. But I think the first one for the prototype, we're gonna do it this way because it's easy and fast, less machining, but long term, I think it's a part that we would have to be machining out. And I see you've got replaceable teeth on the sides. Yeah. We do that, we started doing that on the gra our rotating grapples and it's really nice when you have an investment to try to protect that investment as well. And everybody has a, a different idea. They don't maybe don't want teeth. That's where we can come out with a flat edge. Hmm. Um, so we have options of giving people something different if they need it. Hmm. And then replaceable teeth on the top too. Right on the end there. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna build them out of a AR400. So it's an abrasion resistant material. Hmm. Okay. Are the grapples actually activated by one cylinder, two cylinders? Prob well, actually, blow, what we did is we 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 got rid of the guards altogether, and we're just uh, we have a drain hole so material can come out the front, but we kind of just got rid of it and made it so that really the whole cylinder is protected. Um, we thought of a guard, but guards always seem to get bent and never fit good after you get done. So this thing. Um, and we have the cylinders with steel tubes on them, built mm. right on, and then the hoses will come out right out the sides. Trying to keep it simple, but keep it durable. So we're using, rather than adding a guard, we're creating strength in that whole time by making it part of the guard all in one. Sounds good in theory. All awesome. right, let's go meet Spence. Nice to meet you, DJ. Thank you. Thanks, DJ.
So this is where we're gonna be working for the day. Spence, how you doing, man? Good. Nice to meet ya. So you've already got everything cut out, so now we just gotta start sticking it back and putting it together for the first time. The majority of this monkey claw will be made out of AR-200 and a combination of AR-400. The guys from CMP Attachments had all of the parts pre-cut for us so that we could come in and start welding and assembling and putting everything together. So I just got done boring out the holes, but Spence is putting the first of the forks together right now. So here's the framework. So here's a fun fact about Spencer. I found out he's Derek's very first employee and been with the company longer than anybody else. So this will be the bottom of the fork. This is the top of the first time. So I learned offhand that there's a few things that Spencer likes to do and a few things that he does not mind handing off. One of those things was boring out holes. So anytime we had holes to bore out, that became my job. And rightfully so, because I'm pretty damn good at making things boring. Hey, and if you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. I also learned that Spencer is really good at fabricating. He's got a knack for putting things together, but he really does not like welding. He'd rather try to figure out how to piece something new together than sit and weld all day long. So at this point during the assembly, everything is only getting tack welded. After we know everything fits and works together, it'll get fully welded before it's field tested. Derek and DJ had a nice diagram drawn up so we could uh, go off from that for the assembly, but this is the first time that this thing has ever been put together. So a lot of the concepts and ideas, well the whole thing is basically nothing more than a concept. That means that some of the things, the way they were drawn on paper, couldn't actually be applied in real life, meaning we had some field modifications. You see the AR-200 going to be that's from bending, huh? Yep. The uh, stamp does, does like to bend. That's AR 200. Yep. AR 400 bends better. Oh, that bends worse. Bends worse. It really <laughs> doesn't bend. It <laughs> doesn't bend. All right. We'll just we'll roll that. It'll be We're doing good on time. It's not even 11. Right. Dang. So we've already got the whole bottom already packed together. We did run into an issue on this, but that's what we thought was gonna happen anyway. What was the incident? Um, we're gonna have to cut a little bit off. We're gonna cut a quarter inch off here and then round this off to get around that DOM. Oh, to get around uh, the 
the bracket. Pivot on the gravel. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. I say that like I know what I'm talking about. Sure. Yes, yeah, Spence. That makes sense. Just not in agree. Not. In What are we, before you lift it, what are we doing, Spence? Uh, we're gonna take it. We're gonna set it right, set it right on. We have to manufacture that bracket right now. This bracket. So that we can put the cylinder to the upper grapple and we don't have it so we're gonna go build it so this is gonna be the first of the top grapples this will be the protective shroud that surrounds the hydraulic cylinder protecting it from any loose debris so we want to get this to clear so we're actually gonna put a camper on this so that we get this to blend into there does that make sense Hopefully it does. I also found out another fun fact about Spence and that he really doesn't like grinding. He doesn't mind handing that off. So I got to do lots of grinding. So what we're looking at right here is the top grapple flipped upside down. So everything we're using here, this is AR200, that's AR400, and everything else is made out of those two materials, right? Correct. Uh, quick attachment, straight shift D button. Oh, okay, so the steel plate is 50. Everything else isn't. Like this right here? Yeah, that was AR and crap. Just break off? So one of the things we know we're going to probably end up doing is doing something with the end here. Correct. Right? Yep. It's great for a test run, but we're going to see where the weak point is, whether it just wears here or does it create a stress fracture, oops, sorry, Spence, further back. So we'll see about that. But I got a question for you, Derek. Why did you mount the grapples in between the times? Was there a method to your madness for that? Well, first of all, you're going to get a better grip on concrete because you got a platform here and here. And also, there's another reason, and that's for us to manufacture it. Okay. When you were putting this together, wasn't it really nice just to have all the holes and everything already jigged up for you? Oh, yeah. So, like, there's multiple things that go into it, how it operates, and how is the guy going to put it together efficiently? Mm. So we're looking at the more accurate that we can use our CNC plasma cutters to position our hole. Just one last thing, if this is moved over, this jacket is move over and have to be welded on. Uh -huh. Whenever you run a weld, okay. it's always weaker. 
This grapple is pumped all the way through the time. There's no weld it's not being supported by any weld. So imagine if we move it over three inch, you'd have to weld the ears onto it. So, and also too, um, I think personally having this wider, being on the outside, it'll help keep it stable. So if you put a piece of concrete all the way across, you have it here, for it to come up, the further you have it out, the more it's going to want to be supported. Okay. An attachment that we use a lot is called the beak, and that's made by Daniels Manufacturing. What I wanted to do was use all of the good things about that design, but then add on to it areas that I think it could be changed or modified to fit what we do a little bit better. I wanted a larger bottom plate. A lot of times we're handling heavy materials, but sometimes we're handling just bulky materials. We need something, we need more support on that bottom to be able to grab a larger variety of both heavy and small objects. And talking about grabbing, when I'm coming down or biting down on the material, I wanted two grapples versus one. That way I knew that when I grabbed down on the material, I had a better purchase on it. So as I'm trying to balance it in between houses and gates and fences, I wouldn't worry about anything coming loose. Setting the thread, setting the bolt. These are all stress proof bolts. Instead of one inch regular grade eight, or okay. stress proof. Stress proof. Yeah, they're, uh, I mean, a grade, a grade eight would work, but uh, stress proof can, it's like kind of like AR, but it's, it's in a bolt form. It'll, it can handle like, getting pushed on by a cylinder constantly. Without snapping, right? Yep. Yeah, kind of like, it can bend a little bit without just snapping. Oh. attention to detail because I haven't welded in a while and he's pushing not pulling the weld when I say I haven't welded in a while it's been 37 years since I've last welded In that circumstance, you gotta pull it, but just because you can't, I mean, I guess I could have pushed it like this. Oh, okay. You can pull it if you want to, but oh, it okay. looks a lot better pushing it. Look. After Spence finds out I hadn't welded in 37 years, he figured the best place for me to practice was on the underside of the top claw where as nobody can really see it. And that way if we have to knock it out and start all over again and booger things up a little bit, it won't look so obvious. So I put on the green welding jacket, I borrow a welding hood, and 
I don't think I did that bad. I'll have to show you how it turned out and let you guys critique it yourself. Okay, you guys remember when I was grinding down the edges of these teeth, we'll show you exactly why. Because he's got the grooves filled up with weld, and now the camp will allow him to fit right in. So it's not on the plan, but Spence and I have made an executive decision. We're gonna cut, because we've got, here's the scoop. We got this greaser on this pivot point. And that's going to be embedded in here and inaccessible. So we're gonna cut in an access point on the top. Now we don't have to fish, because before what I would have had to done is take apart, run it all the way up, feel the zerk, hold it there, and then while my hand is in there, trying to hold the grease zerk on, right. pump it up. Yeah, not good. No, now we're not fishing. Now we're not fishing. So here's kind of an interesting thing. This is like a, vac a plasma vacuum. And because the smoke from a plasma cutter doesn't really waft up and out, it just kind of hovers, is the way I understand it. So they put this in and then it's got a giant filter right here. And it just filters what it does. So while he's cutting, that's filtering. this has to get do you double side it do you do both sides or do yep. you do just one oh, okay yep, we're welding it solid all the way around wherever there's a seam all right i'm gonna cut another piece of steel that go on the back side of the quick attack so when your pins come through on your skid loader yep uh it's not just trying on this little bit of three eighths yeah it'll be on it'll be three quarter Makes sense, especially when we're going to be using yeah. as much fry force as we are with this thing. Right.
So everything is fully welded and now it's plumbing time. So we've got to mock up the plumbing first. Okay, so we're gonna make hoses now, Spence? Okay. So see that line right there? Yeah. On the fitting? Line that up with the top of the die. Okay. So right there? Yep. Okay. And then put her in. Hit crimp. And go until it stops. And that's the crimp toes. All right. Down a little bit, yep. Simple. Pretty easy. Take the torch, otherwise, it'll fray. Uh, the hoses, there's a bunch of like debris that gets inside the hoses. Oh. A, uh, gigantic filter so that when you put on your machine, it's already clean. Oh, okay, so you're filtering it right now. Yep. So, and filter and test. So, this will leak check it. We're gonna take all the hydraulic fluid, all the contaminants that may have gotten into that cylinder and it's going into a giant filter over here. And we'll see if it's gonna work. Here we go. we do it on the hose pinching? Not bad, huh? Yeah, not too bad. We have to cut them out more, I feel like, too. So even fully up, we can't get at them. So what do we gotta do? I like, gotta round out these holes right here? Does that mean we gotta get the plasma torch going? Are we gonna have to protect the cylinder underneath? Take the cylinder out, probably? Yeah, I get some pair of leathers in there. Okay. So we're switching over from straight greasers to 45s so that we can hook the grease gun on it. That way maybe we don't have the plasma cut out the holes a little bit more. We're also in the process of taking out and putting thinner bolts and nuts on to the bolts. Okay, we're not even out of the gate yet, but Spence, I already see a couple things we should do on version 2.0. If you look at all of these small fittings right here, that's right we're right in the work zone that's gonna that's gonna get hit pretty fast it's not gonna take very long before we crunch that up you got a plan for that already too oh you do all right oh you guys talked about it i like that i think we got to modify that pin too correct because otherwise out in the field, these guys are gonna be disassembling that hose, that, this, but you wanna move that in the first place. Yeah, cause I think this time, it's gonna end up being dominant a little faster because the hoses are shorter. Uh, so oil's gonna wanna go to that side before that one. So we almost gotta take that and move it to the center and build a nice guard. Take this whole system, run it here, build a nice guard with a step on it right here oh yeah and then have the guard and the step all one yeah and then have the holes that maybe come out with just holes um, holders and then come up and we need a, ho a hose holder correct yeah we need to mount something that manage i don't i don't like having them on the machine correct i like having a separate dedicated hose holder Spence welded on a hose keeper here. We've got a guard bracket put on there.
anything we can pick up? We got some rocks on back. Let's do it. Thanks, Derek. Oh, you do have boulders. the good and bad that I'm seeing about the design. Those top grapples have a slight hook at the end and that's excellent at grabbing onto boulders and not letting them escape. But that also limits the size of the boulders. So if I wanted to grab a five or a six foot boulder, that grapple may not be able to fully grasp all the way around it. Derek's already practicing his boulder wall placement. You're in on one ear. We built it heavy enough to handle some pretty nasty stuff, but... Woo, you only got half these. Oh, oh, that's fat. Angle, but there you go, now you're right. Those are always tricky. Could it do the detail work that we wanted it to do? And that's the next thing to test. All right, guys. We got the new monkey claw on. Look at that. <laughs> nice, big, flat enough part that we can pick up a lot of the small stuff. she gonna do with the smaller stuff clamp down all right let's see what you grab let's see if you got enough pull back there you go yeah bring it in fold it under there you go Nice metal liner. Yeah, it is. So, what Alex is trying to do is instead of gouge the ground, he's trying to pick everything off from the ground. Kind of like you reach down with your hand and pick the garbage up and off. scoop and grab some grass and turf and whatever else is underneath it. He's being pretty strategic about how he uses that. Only reason I say that is because if you're wondering why we're doing it this way, well, now you know. A lot of guys be like, whoa, just scoop underneath it and go. Yeah, that's how you get dirt. You see, we don't have any dirt. That's a pretty clean load. There was 
No dirt. Dirty garbage. The camera would stay mounted. Pick up more boulder than, and that's got the counterweight kit on it. What do you think? I like it actually. Why do you say it like that? I don't know. I just do you normally not like what you guys build. Here, yeah, what? sometimes I just. <laughs> um, I ran it pretty hard because realistically, like um, Olaf was, he was being nice to it. Yeah, but uh, probably somebody that you're paying and like production, you're gonna go field in pile. You're gonna grab into you're it. You're gonna hard. get into her. Yeah. Mm. Um, Only thing I can see is we need a hose by a hose keeper. Yeah. So this is gonna be bad. This, all of this, uh, definitely, it's no good. It works good. I mean, it's so protected on it because one thing I noticed with rocks is they never even get up that yeah. far. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like it. I'm just always used to using a rotating grapple for rocks. I've never tried to move anything with a skid loader. If you guys got suggestions for attachments, comments down below. I'm guessing you're gonna read the comments of the video there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. This is the guy, he actually, him and I came up with this design together. Yep. And DJ. And DJ. And DJ, can't forget <laughs> DJ. DJ's his head engineer. And Spence, and all the team at CMP. I want to thank these guys. Awesome experience coming to your building. Now it's the next nut and nut level is giving it a go out in the field. So hit that subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. God bless you guys. Go get them.